Welcome to session four of our budget workshop. Tonight, the schedule will be the Darien Fire Department, the Neroten Fire Department, the Neroten Heights Fire Department, EMS, Police, Public Works, Sewer, and then Parking Fund. And I think we might have um, our I know Chief Anderson is joining us and Ed, uh, Department of Public Works Director Ed Gentile is joining us. Kate, do we have any uh, fire chiefs? We do not. Okay. okay. So do you want to stick with the plan to start with them? Yeah, so we'll stick with the plan um, to start with the fire department. And we I don't know if we have any uh, board of finance or finance and budget members here, but we're going to do what we've been doing in the past. We will go through the operating, then we will go through the capital for each ind individual department. Then we will open it up to um, questions from the Board of Selectmen. And then if anybody is from um, Board of Finance or Finance and Budget, and they wanna type in um, their questions in the chat, that way we will um, be able to address. And then tomorrow we will start deliberations. So tomorrow we will start our meeting with public comments. So if anybody um, has been following along and has um, questions or concerns they want to bring to our attention, tomorrow at the beginning of the meeting, we will um, be looking for that feedback. And now I will turn it over to Kate. Okay. I'm going to share my screen and let's make sure I get the right one. Okay. Hey, is that really your wall? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's one of those, those one of, uh, you know, those things you can add to it. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to see the, the background here. It's, uh, yeah. you know. Oh, it's of... Jen. Okay, so, um, as Monica said, we're gonna start with uh, the fire departments. So first up is Darianne. Okay, well, let me, I need to move a little, a few things out of the way. Let's make it easier to see. Hey, if you want, you can just hit that little carrot next to reference years and it'll collapse all of those. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the things uh, we thank, learn. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> that is really good to know. Okay, so I'm still making a little bit. Okay, so, um, you know, one thing here, the first line, big increase percentage-wise, not a lot dollar-wise, it's $1,000 um, training services. Um, they're asking for more funding than they had last year to bring um, outside training people in. You know, um, as they get new members, they need, be, need to be trained in things like Firefighter One, um, but the more senior members continue to need training in different specialties, and um, we do really advocate um, training there. The next line item, it doesn't look like there's a big increase to you, but um, the department had asked for $12,000 to do an audit. Um, that is not, you know, their expenses that we pay for are part of our annual audit. They were looking for an audit of their um, separate funds. And I didn't feel that that was an appropriate expense for the town. So I cut it. Did something change? Did they ask for an audit? Uh, this is the because of some reason and did the other departments ask for it as well? No. No, um, this was the first time they'd ever asked for it. Uh, we, you know, we didn't get a whole lot of explanation because if, you know, the people we met with um, were more the operational side, not the administrative side. Um, but um, they have significant funds um, as a 501c3 and any audit of that should be paid from those funds. Um, 
the rest of their accounts, there really isn't a lot of change um, in here. Um, and I didn't change a lot. Um, you know, I should say, um, well, I should, here we go. We do have some, their, their potable water up, you know, percentage-wise are significant, but dollar-wise are not. But these, I looked at the sewer and the potable water, and those are based on actuals. And um, I think that the numbers are appropriate. Um, you know, when dealing with the fire departments, I try and make sure I'm looking at them um, a bit as a whole and trying to be fair in um, making sure that there, there's not great discrepancies in the funding levels. Um, I have tried to look at, you know, what kind of objective measures could we use? Could we look at the size of the district, um, the number of parcels, the number of calls? Um, and it's, you know, it's not so easy because it doesn't matter the size of your district. You have to have a firehouse and that's going to require certain costs. You have to have equipment that requires certain costs. So it doesn't matter how many calls you go on or how big a district is, those um, overhead costs are going to be there. Um, unfortunately, this year we didn't get call information from um, from Darien or Neroten Heights. Um, we do get it from Neroten, um, and it's unfortunate because you'd, you'd see there is, um, you know, Darien and Neroten Heights actually tend to do a lot more calls. Their districts are bigger; they have the highway. Um, Kate, we've gotten those in the past though, right? We have gotten those in the past, yes. No, Kate, actually, I, I have them. I have, have them? For, yeah, I have it for Darian. Okay. Um, and I don't know how to share that right now, but we can, we can send it out. Okay, that'd be great. But so you see, otherwise, you know, this is um, really a pretty much status quo budget. Um, there's not a lot new here. Uh, the other thing I did try and do with the different fire department budgets was keep the increase of, for each one to no more than 3%. Um, I stand corrected, Kate. I have it, but the numbers aren't inputted. Okay. So I just have blank for 2021. Okay. All right. Um, if you're all okay, I'm going to move on to Neroten. Do you want to do their capital? I thought I'd do all, all three at one time. Okay. So again, with Neroten um, training, I don't think I made any changes to their training, no. Um, where I did, I cut some professional services. Um, again, this is an issue of whether or not it's an appropriate expense for the town. Um, they've asked us to pay for directors and officers insurance premiums. This is for their administrative side. And I felt that, that wasn't something that we should pay for. Um, and I'm honestly on the on the fence about the tax preparation. Um, it's not about the firefighting side of it. So on the fence about whether or not we should pay for that. Do um, they, pay for that? Kate, do we pay for that for anyone else? Yeah. And so if we cut it, I think we should be cutting it for all of them. Um, equipment maintenance. Um, I think they did a good job here of laying out um, their, what they're doing in terms of preventative service, anticipated repairs for each piece of equipment. So I think they did a really good job of laying that out for us. And I appreciate that. Now, where I did make a cut, um, I believe it's here. <clears throat> um, I cut back their facility maintenance and repair. And, you know, my reasoning here was, um, this is the smallest building. And I compared the facility maintenance repair for each of the departments. 
and Neurotin's was on a square footage basis was um, twice what the others were, more than twice. Um, and yeah, you have to account for things like, you know, if they've got an elevator, it doesn't matter how big your building is, um, you know, you're going to be paying the same amount. But I reduced their, um, their request, trying to bring it down, you know, closer to what the costs were for the other departments, which are physically um, much larger square footage wise. And so it's a, bringing it back to a level budget through the current year. Excuse me, Kate, this is Mike. But I, I don't know if they're going to have anyone here to sort of advocate or explain why they put in these expenses. But if they're actual real maintenance you know, expenses, I, shouldn't those be provided if they actually exist as opposed to evaluating them on, well, how many square feet do you have? I mean, they either have them or not. Well, they're either legitimate expenses or not, right? Right. So the problem, Mike, is you get things like they've got seventeen thousand dollars, and they say facility repairs, plumbing, electrical, without a lot of detail to know how much that is. You know where they do have um, numbers. Okay, you know we can quantify that. Uh, you know ten thousand dollars for landscaping service. Um, you know some of these it's hard to compare, and so taking a look at how their square, their cost per square foot compared to the other departments was a measure I could use to see whether or not their number was reasonable. Okay. Um, so special equipment repair, a um, bit of an increase there. Um, they have maintenance repair for the fire boat and the Zodiac. I felt that was reasonable. Um, telecommunications, I reduced it to reflect the current um, the current and historic actuals. And I think electricity, um, I believe the same thing. I adjusted it downwards to reflect the, um, the historic actuals. Um, and again, potable water and sewer use charges, looking at the, the actuals, um, brought them in line with what their actual numbers have been. Motor fuel and lubricants, you know, aside from what they get from the um, public works, they do have to gas up the boat. And, and the rest of the dollar amounts, you know, they were small. Percentage-wise, it might be big, but they felt they were reasonable. A little bit more for turnout gear, and that can depend on how many new members they have, how old some of the turnout gear is. Um, that can cause swings from year to year. Yeah, that's my, that was my question. They don't get turnout, new turnout gear every year. I would imagine that yeah. lasts a pretty long time. Well, depends on your definition of pretty long. Um, but there are standards for how long you should, um, gear should last. Um, and some of it depends on their changeover in membership. If they get an influx, influx of new members, um, you know, they might have some old gear they can pass along, but that also depends on size. So um, it can vary. Same thing, air cylinder replacements, those have useful lives and they have to be replaced periodically. So overall, I tried to, you know, I, I said my target with these budgets was no more than 3%. Okay, there's nothing else there. I'm gonna go on to the heights. <clears throat> <clears throat> so last year, um, because they had some increases in other areas, um, we'd cut back their training dollars a little bit to try and bring them all in in a certain range. Um, so they've asked for an increase in training this year. Um, and you can see they've spelled out, they want to send somebody to officer training. They have EMT. Um, bailout training, um, firefighter two, all good things. I think, you know, training is very important. 
Um, professional services, again, that was the DNO policy here that I said, you know, I didn't feel we should be paying for it. Some minor increases in equipment repair and facility maintenance repair. And again, you see like, see this number 34,000 compared to 40,000 um, in Neroten. There's not a lot remarkable um, in this budget. Um, not big changes. Um, tires, this is just a function of what they um, had to buy last year compared to this year. It's not really a decrease. And again, you see, you know, turnout gear, hazardous materials handling, um, just replenishing supply and going to, they've had to change the kind of um, foam they use for firefighting to um, green foam. Um, and again, these these numbers down here, these are these are changes that um, basically these are their proposals. Um, where it's cut, it's not my cut. These are adding some standpipe equipment, some nozzles, um, important equipment for them. Overall, I think you know they they came in with a, a responsible budget. Do we have any questions on the heights? Okay, for all three departments, um, I was recall discussing, I don't know, a couple of years ago that you wanted to rethink the grant process or certain aspects of the relationship with the departments, that one of them beyond, <clears throat> beyond the granting of that grant was going to be that whether the town takes over or has a greater role in their payables as opposed to them doing it themselves. Um, how did all that sort of turn out and what is your current thinking on the oversight of that? Um, you know, honestly, you know, we did make the change where we're paying a lot of the expenses directly and I'm not, I'm not convinced that it's been the best, best method. Um, I honestly, if you, I were going to do it again, I might say it, when you total up all their operating budgets and including the fire commission, we're talking about um, 900,000 or so. Part of me would be inclined to say, here, Fire Commission, here's the $900,000 and um, have at it. Um, In other words, central, you know, I maybe treat them a little bit more like the library, ask them to put together a budget for all three as one entity and give them a grant um, you know, it's, it's a difficult trying to be equal or trying to treat them equitably, trying to recognize that two of them, um, have much greater areas to respond to. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't fund the third. Um, but how do you treat them equitably? What should we be paying for? What should they be paying for? Uh, it's a lot. It and it would be a big change to go to a grant for them. It would be a big change. And, and you know, the other, um, you know, one of the issues I think we have, it's not something they've done, but there is no oversight, independent oversight. There's no department head. There's no independent commission. So... That is a discussion, you know, that perhaps we will have in the future. I'm okay. going to quick touch on the um, fire commission. So we've put some things over the years under the auspices of the fire commission that are shared things. So the first one you see training services, um, all the firefighter one classes are gonna be, are run through the fire commission. Um, they pay dues to some of the professional organizations. They, um, the fire commission is responsible for testing their SCBA units, the hose testing, the ladder testing, pump testing, 
So they handle that for all three departments. Um, we also provide an employee assistance program for the firefighters. But Kate, all of, yep. the, all of the individual testing for the fire, um, firemen is done by each house, correct? When you say testing, what exactly do you mean? Any, any kind of um, continuing education or new testing for a new, a new volunteer? Um, it depends. So the firefighter one is run through the fire commission. That's the basic that they need. Okay. When you go above firefighter one, that's run by each house. Okay. Not to say that they can't do it all together, but we budget for firefighter one under the fire commission. Um, the medical services line is for their annual physicals. And I reduced that a little bit based on what we were actually seeing in numbers um, and expenses over the years. Um, software maintenance, everybody's got it. Um, this is for their e-dispatch um, software. Um, equipment repair maintenance. Um, these are some of the breathing systems, the sea, the sea legs, some of the ground ladders. <clears throat> um, yes, Sarah? Jumping ahead a little tiny bit, under emergency communication services line, mm -hmm. have we where are we in the discussion to maybe combine the dispatching? We did have that conversation a couple of years ago. I don't know. Well, we wanted to get back. To, we wanted to get to having nine civilians in right. the dispatch center and right. have them operate for a while. Um, I will tell you, the firemen are going to oppose um, bringing oh, the dispatch under um, back under. Um, well, I shouldn't, you know, make it that definitive. So far, they haven't been in favor of it. Um, and I, the chief um, is very willing to do what it would take to get this back and have our dispatchers do it. Um, so we need to have discussions now that we're about up to full strength in the civilian dispatch. We need to have discussions. We need to talk about what kind of reports they would want. Uh, what, you know, what are they getting now? And um, how could we best do this? I really, it is a goal. I just don't believe it's going to be in this fiscal year. But actually that's, you know, bringing us down to the, the bottom of the budget. Again, it's, it's not a very um, remarkable budget, no big changes. What we really need to look at with these um, departments is the, um, how do I find my tabs? Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, the capital. Um, okay. Their capital is the biggest capital request that we have when you add the three together. Um, Darien Fire. They're looking to uh, looking to um, upgrade, get a mutual aid radio, and I probably should go back to the details. Um, this is so that they can communicate with some of the other towns that we um, have a mutual aid agreement with. I think it's it's an important um, purchase. Bailout kits. These are um, you've probably heard the, the higher harnesses that would allow them to um, bail out from. Um, an upper floor if they don't have a ladder available. It's a life-saving piece of equipment. I believe it's important for them to have, particularly with um, some of the development that's coming in downtown. Hoses and fittings, we have to replace them periodically as they get older and as they get damaged. The ladder monitor, um, mm -hmm. I'm just bringing up the description of it because I don't recall. Um, I 
All right. I have to go to my notes and see if I can remember what the ladder monitor is. And I don't know. I'll find it, Kate. Jen, do you know if we have anybody from the fire department on here? Uh, I do not see anybody. Okay. Nope. Okay, this is the ladder monitor for Jerry M, right? Yes. Okay, so it is a $9,700 item and it is useful life is 20 years. Um, what problem does it address? It, it's a limit on how the current unit works on the truck. Um, most cost effective and mo it, there's not a lot of, um, basically the benefit is increasing our capabilities with the current ladder truck. Yeah, and I thought he explained when we met with him what exactly the ladder monitor did. That's what I'm looking for my notes, see if I have that. And I don't know how much time you wanna spend on $9,700. Yeah, let's let's move on and we'll yep. we'll we'll, move, we'll come back to that um tomorrow tomorrow okay okay yep at some point can we have a discussion and not tonight um about the different radio line items there seems to be radio <laughs> line items right like everywhere like capital everywhere operating. yes there are yes. well because they all have them and they have to be updated on a regular basis um and, and they the software you know, and the maintenance and yeah the... and they have different purposes mm -hmm. um so um might be best if at some point we have somebody like mark McEwen or bobby bush come in and explain some of it yes um okay so the last one there is the rescue jacks these are um heavy duty jacks that are used for um things like if they have a truck rollover on 95 to um, support the truck while they while they get to do the work that they need to on it, um, I think that's an important um, piece of equipment for for them, considering the you know they have to respond to ninety five. And they also can hold up a building, right, Kate? Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. And I'm, I found I'm the. Sorry, um, this is this is Mike, I apologize. Um, for a rescue jack that's going to be primarily used on 95, is there an ability to make a grant application to the to the state for the some of these expenses that relate to the services like on the state highway or federal highway? Um, I am not aware that the state has um, any kind of program for that. Um, there are grant programs available for fire equipment, um, and I can ask that question of them. That's a great question, Mike. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to go back out, and we'll go to Neroten. Um, so the first one up, um, Neuroten has proposed a bunk room conversion. I think this is a great idea. Um, they would like to convert some of their space to a bunk room and a work room. Uh, the concept is, you know, partly to get people to be willing to uh, basically stay overnight to be on call at times. Um, and the work room part of it is to set up workstations where if they have members who um, have the ability to work remotely, that they could work at the firehouse and be available to be on call. So I think it's a really great way to attract members to keep their numbers up, <clears throat> be able to respond to calls. Um, apparatus tires is just what it sounds like. Um, some of their apparatus, the tires can be very expensive. And then water rescue suits, um, 
they need to be just like their turnout gear periodically, they need to be replaced because they do have useful lives. What I didn't fund here, um, the training projector, they asked for um, $6,500 and um, <clears throat> they wanna be able to, um, well, they do do training in their firehouse <clears throat> and they're not happy with their current setup and how it looks um, using a small projector in the screen. And you know, I cut it because quite frankly, you could do what we did in 206, um, get a large screen TV, those cost less than $900. You plug the laptop into it with a USB cord and you've got a very good display. So I think they could do what they're asking for, for quite a bit less. And that was, that was it. That was the only change I made there. Hey, um, on this one, Oh, no, it's, no, it's at the height. Okay. Excuse and so me. let's go to the heights. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so the heights had a couple things. Um, AED replacements for their, um, their apparatus, um, but that was an important one to do. Um, attic insulation, um, they had made some, um, they had to do some repairs on the firehouse. Um, and as in doing the repairs, I believe it was asbestos removal, they had to, um, they had to remove the insulation in the attic. And so they're asking for funding to put it back, which I think um, considering that we pay to heat the building would be a really good use of our money. Uh, the next one, just a major service to one of the um, pieces of equipment. This one, um, the joint and mortar repair, this $13,000 um, addresses one side of the building. Um, they've they've noticed and had inspected the, the building and the bricks and the joint and the mortar need to be repaired. So all four sides need to be done. And um, so right now they're actually only asking for like one side a year. Um, we did talk to them, see if they could get us a price to um, speed that up a bit, but we didn't hear back from them. This is something that I um, think could be a good use of um, ARPA funds. But it absolutely, I believe, you know, should be done. And I think, I don't believe that I changed anything else. I don't think I cut anything. Let's go back up here. Monica, you had something on one of these? Um, at engine 23, do we know how old that is? Um, no, I don't. Um, we can find that out for tomorrow. And I, you know, I'm hearing you on the ARPA for the, uh, the joint mortar, but if there's, a, if there's cost savings in doing the whole building at one time, I know they haven't come back to us, but we should probably look for yeah. that. Well, and that's, that's one of the reasons why I thought it'd be good for for the ARPA money is if we use that and did it all at once. Right. Um, because I don't, I don't see that, you know, spreading it out. I appreciate their um, desire to be responsible with the town's funds, um, but, you know, maybe this is the time to do them all, all at once. Um, they do have replacement of some of their SCBA units. These are things that are ongoing, the portable radios. Um, things that you can see, we, we do it in cycles. So it happens um, every year. I don't know if you can see that looks like it's probably pretty small print view. Um, but you see like the SCBA doing it for several years, same thing with the radios. We do it in cycles um, because they only last for so long. Okay, I'm gonna come 
Act goes. Um, so the last one, the big one, the Fire Commission. So they've asked for a few things at the drill tower. The first thing they asked for was a classroom. It was a $120,000 request. Um, and it would involve putting a portable there and all the associated costs with that to create a classroom. Um, look at the proposal details. I do think it's a, um, you know, it's a good project. It's a worthwhile project. Um, some of these things, if they want to host training sessions for other, not just themselves, but other communities, they really should have the class on site where they also do the burn, um, the burn training. Um, I just felt with a lot of other things happening, this was not um, something we could afford to do this year. But again, I think this might be a great project for the ARPA funds. Hey, we have the, um, the elementary schools coming down, the portables coming down there. Would it be at all possible to repurpose from the schools? Well, if the schools, I don't know what the schools have planned for them. Um, if they had planned to sell them to another community. Um, I think that's probably, that's worth asking. <clears throat> they don't say where they were planning to get it. Um, but I think that's, that's a good thing to look into. Um, <clears throat> so they wanted to do work on the grounds as well. Um, when they're doing um, live fire training, live burn training, they should have a second source of water. Um, so they need to extend water main and install a hydrant in order to have that second source. So that's in there. Um, they want to upgrade the catch basins um, because of the kind of work they're doing up there. They get um, debris into the catch basin. So they'd like to upgrade them to be able to catch that better. Um, paving the parking lot, I deferred because of the size of the cost and let them get these projects. They've got some projects still outstanding from prior years that they haven't completed, like the fencing, uh, the expansion of the concrete pad. So let's get these other projects done first and then look at paving the, repaving the parking lot. That was my thinking there. Then the big nuts. Replace, replacing the engine. So I'm going to say, Monica, based on this, I'd say that engine is probably at 20 or, or getting a little bit beyond 20. Um, in the attachments, I just put their apparatus replacement schedule out there and it says the original purchase year. And then if there was a refurbished year, that's in there as well. Okay. So, <clears throat> you know, my suggestion um, would be to fund these from bonding if if the projects are to go forward. And Sarah, you were raising your hand. Yeah, I just don't know where we were in that discussion with the bonding. We haven't bought a truck and an engine, I should say, in a few years, is that correct? We actually have one um, that's in the process now. Okay, um, and we haven't contributed. We have not contributed to the vehicle right. replacement fund anymore. That was done away with. Um, is there any way to spread these out or not really? Well, bonding spreads it out. Yeah, no, it does. I just don't know where we are in the discussion. We've been talking about that for a bit. Well, I believe um, the one that we're about to purchase or that we've got um, under contract is being bonded. Correct, Jen? No, that is no? being paid with the remainder of the apparatus uh, replacement reserve funds. Okay. Yeah, we cleared out that account to pay for this truck. And then the idea was we would bond for these trucks going forward. But <clears throat> I, I mean, our decision is, is around whether we need to replace these trucks, how to pay for them, leave that to the Board of Finance. They'll decide whether to tax or bond or, or whatever, that's their job. And then Kate, I had two more questions. Yep. Um, the traffic preemption system, 
feel like we've talked about that and there was a priority to that. Did we decide not to do that or? That is um, an is that older last... project. Okay, so this is, uh, and that's the extended concrete pad that we did that already, right? No, we have, well, it, we approved it already. It right. hasn't been done. So let's, where's their six year? <clears throat> um, I'm just trying to remember. Right, so let me make this a little bit bigger. The traffic preemption was appropriated in 21, 22. Mm -hmm. Um, and as was the concrete pad. So those are, the money's already there for those. But they haven't been done yet? The concrete pad definitely has not been. Um, and I don't recall the status of the preemption system, but I don't think it has been done. Okay. So like I said, I, you know, I think they have things that they need to get done up there before like we do the paving of the parking lot. Absolutely, and the fiscal year is not over yet. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, just going back to that paving. I mean, the the parking lot is is safe, correct? It's not like it has potholes or something. Or if they they do, they can repair those, do spot repairs. I mean, it's not a safety issue, right? Uh, right. Let me. I'll bring up their explanation. Um. <clears throat> Well, the pavement is 30 years old and it's showing wear and tear. Um, you know, they feel it needs to happen as part of the infrastructure of the dual ground. Um, so there's been damage to it, but like I said, I, I, it's not that I don't think we should do it. Just that they've got all the things they need to get done first. Um, and, you know, considering that they haven't gotten that concrete pad yet, they want to install um, this um, additional water main and hydrant, um, I think that's a lot to take on and get done and get the paving done. So I'd like to see the water main extended, the catch basins done, get that complete. Then next year, let's do the paving. Okay. Jen, do we have any questions in the chat? We do not. Okay, I'm seeing stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, David Martin asked why New Roten's equipment repair maintenance was up so high and the others were not. Um, I, that's a good question and I can't answer that tonight. Um, um, some of the, the rescue jacks, you know, for Neurotin, um, some of that's based on their request. It was in next year because they requested it. Yeah, Kate, if I could just log one, one thing. Um, I guess it would it would be helpful and we don't have to do this right now, but maybe over the course of the next year or so to think about this. I I think we ought to have a, a clear view on the fire protection requirements for all this new development. I'd just like to know what it is and I'd like to be comfortable that this these budgets and plans, both for this year as well as uh, upcoming capital projects, that uh, somebody's checked the box on that, that we know we have all that in place. But the second thing is that I've looked at these fire budgets for more than 10 years. And I guess the thinking about what would be a benefit, just given the, the change in roles that we've, we've had, is to get a more holistic view of trying to answer the central question, which is what fire protection capacity does this town need? And, mm -hmm. and they had fresh view. Now, I know there's been some consultants that have looked at that. I can't recall when we last did that. And they've come in and sort of poked around at that. But, uh, you know, again, new administration, it might be time, uh, particularly given how spread out so many different things seem to be in terms of the individual purchases by department. Uh, I guess Sarah brought up again the whole point about radios. It just it feels like this just this whole spread of spending uh, across all of this. And we just haven't been able to take a clear step back and look at this uh, holistically with an eye towards answering that central question, which is what fire protection assets do we need in place? And the last thing I'd say is that I recognize 
the value of having these three independent departments. Um, I looked very closely at that for a long time, and it still seems to me to be a good answer for, for lots of reasons. Uh, that may not be the most efficient answer, but I can understand why that's a good thing for the town, and so I remain supportive of that. But I still think that you can have individual fire departments, but you can also take a holistic view of all this, including the fire commission and everything else, because I don't think we have a, a clear and crisp answer to uh, that, that question, which is what, what fire protection do we need and, and are we getting that in the most efficient way? Right, so you know, actually one of the prior studies did answer that in, you know, in a couple of different ways. And you know, part of it was you know, if you wanna continue with the three different departments um, or if you want to merge departments, um, we put out an RFP for a study of our emergency services, and it goes beyond just the, the fire departments, but um, looking at dispatch, looking at our emergency management, looking at, at the fire services. And um, <clears throat> over the weekend, I was reviewing the responses. And um, I do want to recommend one of the um, consultants. I'm going to have to come back to you guys for about $12,000 to add to my budget to, <clears throat> to pick the, my preferred vendor. Um, but one of the things that we've asked, we are asking to have looked at is, you know, how we're, how we're set up, how we're administered. Are we doing that the right way? And I think that's one of the keys to addressing some of the things around um, joint purchasing um, to make sure that we're doing things in the best way. Clearly, volunteer fire departments are tremendous cost savings to the residents. Um, but just because it costs us less than a paid fire department would, we still need to make sure that we're spending town taxpayer dollars wisely. Um, and sometimes it's hard to, um, you know, hard to say that, you know, like, oh, we value you, but, you know, we still need to make sure we're spending our dollars in a, in a smart way. Um, you know, and have people not assume that asking that question means you don't value them. We, we absolutely value them, but we still want to make sure that we're spending the taxpayer dollars properly or as best we can. Anyway, just a, a fresh look at that in the coming year, yep. I think would be benefit, beneficial. This is a good time to do it. Yeah. <clears throat> and, you know, if I could ask um, board of finance members or F&B members, if you have questions to direct them to Jen through the chat function, not to me, because it's hard for me to, um, to keep checking on those. Okay, um, I do have one that's come in. Yep. Um, regarding the three engines for fire commission, they're asking for all three for next year. Can we push one to next year? Should we push one to next year? Yeah, um, I just would point out one of them is a rescue truck as opposed to an engine, um, two different functions. <clears throat> um, and I think that's a, that's a valid question. Um, okay. Um, if there's nothing else on the fire departments, um, we are done with the fire departments. And going to head over to the police department. And the chief is with us tonight because um, it's a big budget and I know an awful lot about it, but it's always helpful to have him here to add the color. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I'm gonna start out in, in administration and um, address the big one right away. In this budget, um, the chief has asked for a full-time IT support position. I am supporting that. Um, they, you know, they have unique needs in the police department with their software, but it's not just their software, it's, um, it's technology. One of the issues um, they face more and more is FOI requests and um, one of the roles of this technology person would be to <clears throat> to deal with the um, body camera footage um, 
you know, depending on the call involved in an FOI request, um, you, you can have multiple cameras that have to have people's faces um, redacted or blurred out. And that can take a whole day with two officers doing it. Um, so that's an important thing. It also, um, it would free up some of our other officers who are now doing IT support function to do the jobs that they're supposed to be doing as police officers, to be you know the captain of the administrative services, to, um, to be a patrol road supervisor, um, get them back out there actually being police officers. Um, you will see in this budget too some reductions um, based on retirement of um, our administrative captain. Today was his last day. Um, we are going to miss Bob very much. Um, but I'm going to stop there um, because I think this IT support position is um, a big change and I'm sure you have some questions and the chief is here to assist in answering them. Um, any questions? Yeah, this this is another one of those things that I, I, I'm supportive of that. I, I get the whole need for, for IT support in, a, uh, in, in an environment like that. But one of the things I worry about is that this is another thing where maybe we would benefit from more uh, just holistic thinking and checking. So for example, I know Jeff Adams runs IT for the schools and that we get his services to support the town. And then I'm sure that the library's got its own IT director and here we're going to put in another one in the police department. And I just want to make sure that we're taking, we're, we're asking that background question, which is, okay, we think holistically about the town's IT needs and how all that needs to be coordinated, you know, single point responsibility, consolidated purchasing. I mean, all those types of things that would ensure that we're efficient. Uh, I think that's important. Now, maybe this person is really just a help desk role as opposed to, you know, a system administrator and kind of doing all that. Uh, if it's that, and it's really just about freeing up officers from uh, largely IT support tasks at the department, uh, making sure their phones are working, what have you, I, I think that's okay. But if there's any aspect of this person's role that kind of cuts into something that feels more systems oriented or like a townwide role, I, I'd, I'd question that. But as a general matter, I'm supportive. Well, I, I, I agree there. I think, and I'm looking at the IT committee that we um, that we just recently formed, and I'm wondering, and I'm sure the chief can answer this, if this person, if, if this job that they will be doing is really, really specific to the police department, or could we, should we be looking at this as a, a more holistically for the whole town, in, in, including um, the Board of Ed people? Well, good evening, folks. It's a pleasure being here as always. Yeah, this is this is more of a position directed toward police department operations. We're not looking to supplant town IT. Our systems hang a lot on their servers, but we need someone that speaks the language with a Jeff Adams so they can handshake and make sure that they are on the same page. Now, as Kate, as Kate mentioned, some of the things that we have here are just completely foreign to other IT type operations, like our our nice recorder for all our incoming phone calls. When we get an FOI request, somebody has to actually go into that system and pull that data out and review it before it can be released. Same with body cam footage, as she mentioned. If, if we're at a, a major scene and we get a, um, we get a request FOI for body cam footage, that might be five hours worth of footage that we have to watch every minute of it to ensure that we're not releasing information that the state precludes us from, from releasing. So. It's not somebody that's going to be doing, uh, you know, design of all new servers. It's going to be operational more than anything else for us, but somebody that speaks the language. And, you know, for even our portable radios, we had Lieutenant uh, George Patone here for years and years and years that would program our radios. He was a midnight lieutenant. He had the computer system to program our radios. He is now retired. We don't have that luxury anymore. Uh, we need radios programmed now. We have to play, pay the rack rate. At North, Northeast Communications, which is substantial for them to work on our, our radios. Uh, Sergeant TJ Moore, who's been here for quite a few years and is our IT supervisor, I believe that he will be setting sail to retirement in the not too distant future. 
we're not going to have the luxury of somebody in house that's going to be able to do these things. Chief, do you see any corresponding reduction in overtime from other officers? Uh, not, well, we do pay TJ Moore some overtime when our systems crash. And, you know, the, uh, I think this board has probably heard that our telestaff system, which is UKG Kronos, was subject to ransomware for the last six weeks. We've been without our system. Just to point to his technical expertise, the fix, uh, the fix worldwide for the billion dollar company came out of his private company. So that's what we have right now. So yes, we do pay him some overtime uh, to work on these kind of things. Whether or not we could get it all done with a full-time IT professional, yeah, I think that we might get some overtime reduction there if we have a 40 hour employee, a week of employee here doing that. TJ Moore is a road sergeant. He's a road supervisor. He does the IT stuff in addition to his regular duties, and he's willing to do it. I don't, I don't know when he sleeps, actually. <laughs> you know, on the town side, one of the benefits for us would be um, freeing up the member of the RT department that supports the town now. It would get us more time with him because he wouldn't be spending as much time on the police. Okay, any more questions on that? Jen, any from uh, commissioners? No, there was one question. If you could just scroll down a little bit, someone had inquired about seeing a fully loaded cost for a position. On all of our position request forms, which are attached in OpenGov, you'll see at the bottom, the salary, social security benefits, retirement, and then a total cost. Jim, was this cost based on um, the DC plan or the DB plan? Uh, this one, as it's expected to be non-union, is a pension. Okay, um, thanks. Town pension. Okay. All righty. So go back into administration. Um. Slight increase in holiday pay. Um, that's a contractual item. Um, slight decrease in conferences and meetings. Um, here, professional services, you see decrease. Um, we had originally budgeted for anticipated promotional testing um, to happen in fiscal 23, but it's actually going to happen in fiscal 22. Um, so we were able to remove that cost from the next year's budget. Clothing, again, that's contractual, slight decrease in the cost of uniforms. Um, we didn't have to buy as many Molly vests this year, or we won't have to buy as many Molly vests. Um, <laughs> we're not, we cut the um, budget for prisoner um, meals and food. It's not that we're gonna feed them less. Um, we just have less prisoners um, overnight that, or, you know, at meal times that we have to feed, we're just not keeping them there. Thank you for explaining that. <laughs> um, all right. I'm going to go in alphabetical order. So that's the way it is here. Um, this is the animal control. Um, there is not much, um, going on here. No real change from last year. Slight increase in uniforms, it's $50 though. Um, that's a contractual item. So, so things like veterinarian bills don't go up as the animals get older? You know, that's a, um, that's a, it's, it's something that's gonna fluctuate, depends on um, if we have an animal that we have to pay for or not. This is, um, this is not our, um, canine officers. This is, um, I think, the dog warden. Oh. Okay, communications. More radios. Pardon? More radios. More radios, yeah. <laughs> um, 
What you see here is um, basically the effect of last year. Um, we had budgeted for the going to the nine officers. Um, our actual original budget was to hire them in January. And then we sought a transfer um, early in the year to speed up the hiring. So what you're seeing here is the impact of going to the full, um, full nine for a full year. Um, you're gonna see an overtime increase here um, with the expectation that we will be at nine civilians. Um, the overtime in the dispatch center will belong to the civilians. We will only be going to police officers um, as a absolute last resort. Um, we will be looking to um, perhaps sign on some per diem dispatchers to um, help with overtime. Um, um, holiday pay, the dispatches are entitled to holiday pay, same as um, police officers based on the fact that they have to work on holidays. And radios, always the radios. Um, sorry, I've just been joined by my four-legged assistant. Um, any questions on communications? Okay. Yes, I have one in the chat. Uh, if we are fully staffed in dispatch, why do we have 65,000 in overtime? <laughs> because dispatchers will get sick. They will go on vacation. Um, there will be emergencies where we perhaps need to have more than two in, in the uh, dispatch center. So um, if we break it down. <clears throat> the assumption is, I don't know if you can read that. Um, 90 days of vacation backfill, 45 sick day backfill and 18 personal day backfill plus three emergency storm where we'd have to bring in other people. So nine is basically the, um, the minimum that you need to run 24 seven with two dispatchers on each shift. So there will be overtime. Um, the only way to eliminate overtime would have been to hire another um, dispatcher, which is a much higher cost. And can you explain the term backfill? Backfill, uh, meaning to fill a vacancy. So if an officer or a dispatcher rather is um, on vacation or out sick, we need to fill that spot. And then related with the overtime now in civilian dispatch, is there a reduction in police overtime? We will get to the patrol in a bit. That's it. Okay. Next up is fleet services. This is our mechanic. Um, <clears throat> small increase in dollar wise in overtime. Um, in addition to being mechanic, he does help thing with things like snow removal and other building maintenance things. Uniforms, tires for um, <clears throat> the fleet, they are expecting a price increase, which is the reason for the increase in that budget. Otherwise, um, it's a pretty stable budget. The Detective and Youth Bureau. So, <clears throat> you know, you're seeing a decrease here. That's not that anybody was let go. That's just um, based on changes in who's, who's in there. Um, we are um, reducing overtime based on historical data. That was their proposal. That was not me. Um, holiday pay, again, um, this is based on the contract. Um, what we went to a couple of years ago is the officers have the option to choose pay or time off. And so, you know, we have to do every year an estimate of how many will take each um, the various options. Um, equipment rental. What did we, something is costing us less than it was the fingerprint machine, I believe. Yes, that's a new reduced rate with the new uh, state supplier of the live scan fingerprints. Okay. And otherwise, oh, this is a new item. 
the technical investigation unit. Um, this is, if I remember correctly, Don, it's our, basically our dues for the, um, the computer. I'm sorry, Don, can you help me out with that one? Sure thing. This is, this is our annual participation fee with the state's attorney's technical investigation unit. It involves uh, specially trained investigators from every Fairfield County agency, and they work out of a lab in Weston. These are the investigators that do this part-time, but they do the investigations that are very, very sensitive, mostly involving uh, child pornography and that type of investigations. So it is run by the chief state's attorney for the state of Connecticut, uh, they're very diligent and they're very highly trained doing very onerous work that we don't like to discuss all that much, but that is a state set fee from the state's attorney's office for our participation in that unit. And it's Roughly. a new fee this year, correct? It's been born out of the alarm fund. Okay. The discussion I think is just should be part of the operational budget. Um, it's, it's, it is nothing new. We've been part of this, this task force and this technical unit for you know, since the heyday of Chief Lavello. So it's been many, many years. It's just where the money uh, for the participation fee is coming from. Okay. Do we have any questions on this budget? Nothing in the chat. Okay. So Chief, that was coming out of the, um, the false alarm fund before? Yes, that is correct. So one question that just popped in is why did that change? Well, through discussion, as I mentioned, that this is an operational expense that will be year after year that I just think it's more appropriate to be in the operating budget, meaning that it's an ongoing operational expense for something that the police department unfortunately needs to do on a regular basis. You know, I, I have to agree with that. I don't believe it's something because it's an operational expense, I don't think we should be um, putting a lot of that thing into the false alarm fund. It should be something that's recognized in, in the tax supported budget. Yes, agree. Okay, going to move to patrol. And so here I'll um, show you, if you take a look, you're gonna see in patrol every officer, their educational stipend step increases, every single patrol officer. So this is not all 51, but you know, this is where the bulk of them are. Um, what you will see here, if you go into the detail and scroll all the way down, um, we've made some adjustments and see, <laughs> it's a long way down. Um, made some adjustments to reflect the retirement of some officers. Um, so that's where um, activity you'll see there. Um, that's why the reduction in the um, budget is not a cut in our officers. It's just reflecting the fact that we've had some senior people retire. Um, over time, the new IT hire was in there, Kate. The no, the new IT hire was in the administrative. Okay, I thought okay. That. Um, so patrol over time. I don't know why I can't get this little thing to get out of the way. Um, it's broken up, and you can see <clears throat> it's broken up into the reasons for um, reasons for the overtime training. We see a lot of training going through here, firearms training. Then we get down to the bottom. Um, there is backfill. There should be backfill for vacation um, and overtime. But um, this, this is the general overtime. This is where you know it may not appear to be a reduction, but we no longer have overtime occurring from these officers um, being in dispatch. We also no longer will have officers on regular duty in the dispatch on the midnight tour. Um, so they'll actually be out on the road. Um, 
that is, let me go back out and see if I can get back in and get rid of those. Okay. Um, there's not a lot, um, especially equipment repair, small increase there, operating supplies, um, about $3,000 there. Don't recall if that was anything in particular. Traffic signs, yeah. Um, and these are replacements for our speed sentry signs, for helmet cams. Um, Just on the helmet <clears throat> cams, if I can jump in real quick. That's yeah. for the Southwest Emergency uh, Regional Response Team. Uh, that team, the regional team found out through uh, the state that they are required, like every other officer, to have body cam or a helmet cam on during all operations. So being that that team is made up of uh, seven or eight different agencies, they didn't want to spare body cam videos. They want to run on one platform, which certainly in my mind is the best case scenario that that video will be available to the Darien Police Department, but it will actually be video of the Southwest Emergency Response Team all on one platform. Okay, <clears throat> personal protective gear, um, buying 16 vests. This is a number that can go up and down. Um, some of it has to do with how many new officers we have, um, how many officers the gear is expiring or, you know, at the end of the useful life. So this is something that will fluctuate from year to year. And because we um, budgeted with the anticipation of several new officers due to retirements, um, you'll see a bit of a cost increase there. This is a point of reminder for or, or new members of the board. We budget for the full expense of the uh, ballistic armor. However, through the Ballistic Vest Partnership from uh, the Department of Justice, we get 50% reimbursement. We can't count on that from Congress year after year after year, but in, in, the, in the time that I've been doing it, we've always received the 50% reimbursement, although we budget for the entire amount. Um, <laughs> weapons, this is not um, a reduction. It's we don't need the training cartridges for the tasers um, because we've, we've got new tasers. And that is the end of patrol. Are there any questions on patrol? None in the chat. Okay. Professional standards. Oh, sorry, just one quick question. It, yeah. In terms of um, salaries, the retirees are in there and the new hires that are replacing the, them should be in there as well? Right, so what you'll see is, um, you might see like, uh, here we have a patrol officer at step five. Um, and if he retired, they're gonna be replaced with a patrol officer at step one. And there's quite a significant difference in the um, rates of pay between step five and step one. So okay. that's where you see down at the bottom um, a couple step ones. Well, no, actually, all we did was calculate the difference between the five and the one gotcha. and put it in as a reduction. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, actually, you can see here that 26,000, that's just one going from a five to a one. Gotcha. How many new hires are we looking for? Two? We've had um, Captain Shredders. We have four openings. We, we have four openings. One. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And we're going to have additional, you know, openings be, but by the end of this calendar year, I'm quite certain. Yeah, and so what we tried to do was the ones we know, as as we learned about them, um, we reflected um, the changes um, as best we could. Professional standards. This is. Um, their training and education. Um, don't believe there's um, you know, we do have training here. Um, so this wasn't a decrease on my part. This was based on their request. You can see there's a lot of training that they go through. Sarah, are you 
Sorry, the dog's barking. Um, quick question for you. Uh, or maybe it's not quick. Um, Chief, we talked last year about the fact that the budgets were starting increasing based on um, response to the police accountability bill. Do we have a an idea of what this year's budget no. has as far as dollars um, in response to that? Well, in the when we get the capital, we'll see a, a request for professional services. Um, to go over our general orders to ensure that we are in compliance with that. In addition to that, we have budget requests here for mandated mental health assessments that are required for all sworn officers in Connecticut on their three year replacement cycle and drug testing for 20% of our uh, department. Actually, it's, it's drug testing for re recertification cycle and then 20% of our department for the mental health. So that's in there as well. But some of the training that we're doing is in response, even right. not by, to the letter, but as in response to the police accountability bill to ensure that we are providing best practice and we are up to date on all our general orders to ensure compliance. I almost wonder if we should publish that somewhere. D for Kate. I, I... Um, the amount? Yeah, we're doing you it. You know, yeah, Don, if we could work on that and see, you know, like what the, the cost impact is, um, we could include that in some of the narrative. I mean, I'm proud of our town chief. You said many times you've already had many of these things in place. I know that you're doing more every year because of it. I'm just curious. And the training that we have to do for, uh, you know, some of these things in, in response to state mandates, some of it we did, it was more codified where we have to do an additional, like for human trafficking, for example, it's a state mandate that we do human traffic training for all officers every year. So I can certainly get that list of, uh, and put a dollar to it on a yearly uh, on a yearly basis. Okay. Um, records. There's um, not a lot of exciting stuff happening in records. This is where our software maintenance is. So you can see um, a lot of different packages that the police department use. Biggest thing here is the um, body camera licenses. That's an annual fee? Yes. Wow. It's mainly the storage. Um, Chief, just curious, how long do you have to keep those? Uh, it's all mandated by state statute. Some things like a, a routine traffic stop, if you want to, if there is such a thing where no uh, complaint is filed or there's nothing pending, I think they can go after 30 days. Other things have a 10 year retention cycle. So it all, it's all on a list of how long we have to keep each, each individual case. I think. Uh, Car crashes, I think, are typically a couple or three years to ensure that civil suits are not filed. And it's kind of on that retention period. Uh, you don't want to get rid of something too soon in case it gets requested, but you don't want to be having the situation where you're retaining data on the cloud for uh, a millennium. So there's a slide. Is that, is that something that the, I, the new IT hire would manage? Or is that? Yes, he would. Or yes, she would, depending on <laughs> he or she, yes. So currently it's being done by officers. It's done by the administrative services captain, the IT supervisor and the records uh, officer. We have three people kind of with their thumbs in the pie and they all do a very nice job working together uh, to get it done. But, you know, some days we have a captain and, and maybe the administrative lieutenant or the records officer. All they did for an entire day is watch video and redact. Uh, and we cannot charge under state statute for FOI or time or materials for releasing these things. So it's an expense we have to bear, but that's certainly something I'm looking for the IT person to spearhead and take care of the lion's share of it. Question Thanks. in the chat on that one, Kate. Yep. Do we anticipate the double digit increase in maintenance software each year? Oh, um, no, I, I, I sure hope not, but 
um, we're kind of at the mercy of the software companies. And I always find that the increase in software support generally outpaces, um, you know, other index, you know, like cost of living index indices, um, but it's not usually that high. Um, <clears throat> crossing guards. Um, you may not have known this, but the crossing guards are town employees. Nothing terribly remarkable there. Hey, can you explain why they're not, why they're town employees not on their board of ed? Nope. <laughs> um, we have looked into it. We've talked a number of times about um, trying to make that a board of ed responsibility. Um, the chief has reached out to his peers and um, the majority of the towns, um, it is a town um, responsibility under the, the police department. Um, why it started that way, I don't know. Maybe because they're generally an extension of the police department. Don, do you know anything? Well, I mean, I could speak to it a little bit. I mean, we would talk about it uh, on the board from time to time as an expense, generally as it related to a town expense or an educational expense and obtaining access to the school buildings. I think whether it's through roads or sidewalks or police protection is a, uh, is more naturally a town expense. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all, all of our same tax dollars, but uh, I think that's the general, uh, you know, philosophy. It's the access to getting to the physical plant is more of a town responsibility. If it helps at all, we do get credit when um, when the school files all their expenses and they look at the in-kind services that the town provides on their behalf. We, you know, we do get credit um, for the cost of that. Do they answer to the board, of, to, to the school or do they answer to the police department? The police department. Okay. Yeah, they answer to the police department. They're trained by the police department. And somewhat unfortunately, when they're out, they are, they are backfilled by a police officer. So on some mornings over the last three weeks, we have had three patrol officers uh, doing school posts because of sickness and COVID and other illnesses on the part of the uh, crossing guards. It's never been a problem about uh, training them or even maybe filling their spot when it's an emergency. It's more about the administrative tasks of trying to find crossing guards, mm. for one, and then have the administrative lieutenant gets the phone call in the morning that I'm out ill today, and then the position has to try to be filled with an officer. Uh, something we arm wrestled a little bit with the Board of Ed, but uh, as Kate mentioned, right up on top, uh, I, I conducted a poll of my peers in Connecticut, not just Fairfield County, and the lion's share of them do fund their crossing guards from the town side of the budget and they run through the police department. Okay. And, you know, we did look at um, outsourcing it and the cost was just astronomical. So we did not go there. Commissioner Hayes can give you that number. He did it again just recently. If I'm not mistaken, it's at least double, if not triple what we expend for, for crossing guards to ha have it outsourced by a private company. They take the liability insurance, they do the backfilling, they do the overtime, but it is very, very expensive. Okay, um, last category here is the station operation. Um, <clears throat> so the salaries in this are civilians. Um, we do have a new um, staff member there um, going through steps, which is the reason why you see a slight increase. Part-time salary, same, the opposite, we have a new employee there, so it's a little bit less expensive than it was last year. Um, overtime salary is minimal. Um, they have their own waste disposal, facility repairs, um, and equipment maintenance is ongoing, trying to um, keep that building functioning. I think we've got it in a much better place um, with all the different um, systems. Um, sewers, sewers up 94%. Yeah, I looked at that one and um, it's legit. 
Um, I looked at, because <laughs> I thought, damn, but I looked at what their actuals were and, and that was legitimate. I did knock their electricity down a little bit based on the actuals. Um, but yeah, sewer. Um, <clears throat> and again, heating fuel up a little bit. Um, I do try and look at the actuals and make sure that the numbers are on target with what, what they're doing. Okay, and, and folks, on the sewer use charges, Ed, when oh Ed, yeah. <laughs> Ed comes on a little bit later, he might be able to expound on He's it a on. bit more. But some of that is our jetter system that we have to install in the sewage pipes because of the ongoing backup that we had time and time and time again. So the DPW graciously installed a jetting system that jets hot water through, through the pipes to keep them clean. So we're not out there in zero degree weather trying to get our pipes clean. But it does increase the flow. Correct. So we, um, cut it, we cut it back substantially and <laughs> we had another- uh, We had a backup incident last week. So we had to go back on. We're going to try to monitor as we go forward to make it as frugal as we can with extra water going through that system, but we're going to have to keep it operational, especially when it's five degrees like it is today. Yeah. And unfortunately, this was something that was a bad design and um, we're not going to be able to really fix it. This is the best fix that we can find. How long have we been able to go without a problem? Uh, we were doing very, very well since <laughs> last winter until this latest one. And because, you know, we did, because of our water use was going up exponentially, we, the DPW looked at it and cut back the water flow. But now they cut it back probably a little bit too much when it's this cold. And that's why we had the issue again. So again, we're going to try to keep watching it and get a happy medium where it's optimal and, and not excessive water, but enough to keep it clear. Okay. All right. Let's go to the capital for the police. I'll do it this way. Look at the six year plan. All right, so small capital, $5,000, um, put that forward. Vehicle replacement, um, pull that up. Sorry for the slow connection. So we're replacing two vehicles. Um, one would be undercover, one would be marked. And the second one might be administrative vehicle. This Is it administrative? Year. Because of the fact of the COVID problem, yeah. we basically got two years worth of cars in one fell swoop. So that's why we're not asking for cars. So it's a significant savings in the next fiscal year. It's not going to be sustainable, but at least we get a little, a little breather. A little breather this year. We weren't able to get patrol cars for quite some time. Um, okay, replacing an AED, uh, replacing the MDTs. Um, this is in both this and the AEDs. These are ongoing things that have to happen on a regular basis um, as they reach the end of the useful lives. So this is where the next one down, this, um, oh, sorry, not quite there. CCTV system. Um, the camera system at the police department is aging. And it doesn't cover everything that it should cover. Um, so we would like to replace it, um, get up-to-date equipment and get coverage in all the areas that we need to have it. Um, hey, next, is, there, yeah. is there any resale value on what we take out if it's still working? On the cameras? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Um, have to look into that. I think it would be minimal. And when we are replacing CCT, uh, CCTV cameras ongoing now, we are ensuring that the cameras that are put in are, are high def spec where, where in the event we do get funded for a new system, that those cameras will be able to plug and play with a new system. And the police commission and I had a quite extensive discussion on this CCTV 
system are now 11 years old in the building. What really came to, to bear is when we had a young lady vandalize our, our police memorial out front and we did not have uh, significant video footage for us to determine who did that. So when we have video lapses of coverage in front of the police department building, that, that was kind of what drove this discussion. Okay, the, um, the next item, the Daigle Law, the general orders, this is um, what Dom was referring to earlier, um, to upgrade yeah. the general orders. Yeah, we have, we have very smart people here, and we've had very smart people here for a lot of years doing our general orders, including you know, Chief Lavello, who was an attorney who did a lot of them. Uh, we got a, very, a lot of people who did a lot of work here. But with police accountability, uh, we're looking to have an outside company, probably the Daigle Law Group, who does our a lot of the training for use of force and, and that type of thing to look, go over our general orders line by line to ensure that we are in full compliance with not just police accountability in the state of Connecticut right now, but to get us set for CALEA certification, what is currently required from the state of Connecticut by 2025. And I think so, in the current Chief, environment- Chief, I'm sorry, this is uh, Mike Burke. Uh, do you see that as a, potentially an ongoing expense or do you feel like a, like a one pass through and then not much updating after that? I mean, how do you see this going forward as a recurrent expense, if you will? Yeah, I, this, this would be a, a not a one-time lift, but it will be a one-time lift of this expense and then a, a minimal probably review cost every year. Uh, only if something comes down the pike that is significantly changed. So I, yeah, I would not, I would not envision any type of number approaching this after they go through this and get us ship shape where we need to be. Because I would think there would be some sort of economy of scale as these new policies come out. This law group would be looking at it. It would be the same applicability for every one of their clients. It's not like they'd be reinventing the wheel every year for uh, Darian. They would be doing it for all of their clients, right? And that is true. There, there's no mandate that we take every uh, recommendation that they give us. It is still incumbent upon the department to whether, whether or not our general orders are going to reflect what they tell us. Now, most of the case, smart guys like me defer to smart people like them and we'll do it, but it's still kind of up, upon us at the end of the day. But yes, you're right. Most of these things are going to be streamlined across all their client base which they're not just in Connecticut, they're across the country as well. So Chief, Thank along you. with that, they offer a, this same group offers a video training program um, that, that is um, matched up with this. Did you consider adding that request? Uh, I could check with TJ White. I believe we get that component with our Power DMS that we uh, use. They're partner with Daigle Law Group. So we do a video training with them quite often. Okay. okay. Um, next one was the drone. And if you remember a couple nights ago, we talked about um, that our emergency management director um, saw the drone. Um, Police department did as well. Um, you know, be useful <clears throat> in searches, rescues, crowd monitoring. We have an officer who is certified um, to fly drones, which is um, a necessary step. Um, the chief has indicated that he would be happy to um, share the use of the drone with other departments, you know, where they need it. Um, you know, so for emergencies, um, possibly for the building department. Um, so I think this is, <clears throat> it's time to, um, to go forward with one of these. So Chief, on this one, your quote is $3,000 less than the um, emergency management system quote. Did you, are, are you um, just a better negotiator? 
I would defer to Captain Marin on that one. He's doing the he's doing the drone oversight, but he 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 can squeeze a nickel pretty good as well. Uh, I I know he did, he we went and did a lot of research from a lot of different agencies as to what we thought we would need. You know uh -huh. the numbers he came up with, and these prices are going down all the time. They're not going up. If this was funded, I would hope that we could bring it in at that number or less by the time it was funded. And to Kate's point, thankfully, we we don't have a town where we would be running a drone every day. So we do need some utility for our drone operator to have time on those gimbals. So he's ready to go when we do have an emergency. Hence, he can work, you know, mutually with planning and zoning or fire department, you know, maybe not, maybe not available 24 seven, but certainly on a, on a, you know, combined effort when they need that. So I think it's a win-win for us. Yeah, there was definitely a lot of demand for this from other departments, coincidentally, all this year. And I know last year also. So um, sounds sounds like a program that's time has come. Yes, you know, someday in the in the Jetsons future, some police departments are already dispatching drones to, to calls for service. They're not even dispatching an officer. There's California agencies that are dispatching a drone first and they get on scene to see if officers are needed there and if if they are what type of uh officers mm -hmm. needed so i would think at some point in this building you'll see sometime uh, some kind of drone heliport on our roof where we'll be able to deploy drones right here from the police department so how how many people do you think should be qualified to operate it in the police department well, right now we need to start with one right okay. so at some point in the future i would i would see that we could probably use a second one, but we have to walk before we run here and make sure that we're doing it right. So, you know, we don't have any drone now. One would, for, for the foreseeable future, I think, would be sufficient. Oh, no, I'm not saying drones. I'm saying how many people should be trained to operate it. Um, I'd like to see at least one other, um, you know, maybe somebody in the emergency management services. Yeah, in the town, we should certainly have more than one. Yeah, that was my question. So if another department needs to use it, how do they hire the police officer to manage it? Where does that funding come from? Yeah, well, that would be, you know, so that would be a reason for having another um, another employee trained so that if the police officer is not on duty, we do have somebody else who would be able to um, use the drone and not have to bring them in on overtime. think oops um the last item there was uh i did not fund wait oh, i'm sorry you, I didn't rifle, fund there are two rifle. more the rifles the rifles i funded that's an ongoing um replacement program um the idea is that every officer um should have an assigned um rifle um so that's an ongoing pro program and then uh, landscaping. Um, I'll pull up the description. I didn't fund it. Um, it's one of those. It's a little it was a little hard, you know, when I was cutting other areas um, to deal with uh, landscaping. So this was to um, make the building look the grounds um, more attractive appearing. Um, they've gotten a little bit overground, so um, the police department doesn't have the staff that can maintain it. Well, I took a look, and I think it's more than a little overgrown, and I think it's a lot of poison ivy, and I think it's um, not manageable for the current maintenance, and if I'm seeing correctly, I think it's a pretty, Chief Anderson, how large of an area are you looking at working on here? Uh, the, the overall request is for two different spots. The main spot that's of most concern for me, and I'll explain why, is the hill on the west side of our building. Uh, it's where the parking lot abuts against the, the Nielsen property in the back. It's probably between 15 and 20 feet wide, and it's probably 175 feet long. 
Now, when they did plantings to buffer the building behind us, they planted coniferous trees, they planted different kinds of shrubs and bushes, but it's a hill. It does not really conducive to mowing the lawn around them. So what happens is it looks like it's an abandoned brownfield there during the summer. And we have people out there trying to pull the poison ivy and then they get poison ivy. So I'm looking for that side of the building to get some kind of uh, plastic down and some kind of trap rock or, or gravel to keep that almost not maintenance free, but certainly much more maintenance, less intensive uh, for our people, especially during COVID the last couple of years, they've been running ragged on the inside of the building, trying to keep it clean. Now in the front of the building, the Parks and Rec for years was very, very nice to us. And they took unbelievable care of the front of our building. They almost looked like Augusta National out there. They were detailed to another location and they could not do our building anymore. We just don't have green enough thumbs to take care of some of the plantings that are out there. And three times this year, I've had people contact me and one lady actually walked into the lobby and demanded to talk to the chief and she was very nice. And she said, chief, I cannot believe what the front of your building looks like. I have three, three things in my car and I have a shovel and I want to plant these plantings in the front of your building because it looks like the front of your building is abandoned. So again, we're not looking for Augusta National we were, you know, for this request. We're just looking for a presentable, low maintenance you know, grounds and physical plant. We'd be more than happy to take the uh, Parks and Rec folks back if we can you know, twist some arms to get them here. I'd like to reconsider this project. <clears throat> okay. Um, that is the end of um, the police department budget. If um, anybody has further questions on either the operating or the capital requests. We do have one additional question on the drone. Um, yep. Regarding drone footage, is it similar to body cam where it would need to be saved, available for court, FOIable, and would there be any additional storage costs for that data? It would be FOIable. It would be subject to retention for most, uh, you know, criminal or or uh, emergency events. Yes, uh, I don't foresee that storage costs would be all that much. I think we can probably get that in our Taser uh, Axon recording platform. If not, we can put that on a standalone server here. At, at worst, and we hope we don't have to use the drone too often. It would be a once a week type event. And I don't even think it would be that much, but uh, I don't. I think expenses for data retention for that drone would be would be fairly it should be small. minimal. Most of it probably can stay on the SD card that comes out of the drone, and may not even have to be downloaded onto a server. Okay, That's we're it. good. All right. I just, I just have one thing to add, if I can, just as a point of order. I, I take very, very little uh, credit for crafting this budget. Uh, as Bob Shredders, as, he, as they mentioned, Bob Shredders retired today. I have, I'm lucky to have numerous right hand men and women here. So Captain Jeremiah Marin and Lieutenant Ali Hadema and Lieutenant TJ White, they all really carry the lion's share of crafting this budget and giving me everything I need to get this done. And I just want to give them kudos. I appreciate the hard work that they do trying to bring forth a, a reasonable, you know, understandable and defendable budget, which I think we do year after year. Anybody who might be listening that's not on the board who thinks otherwise, please, you know where to find me. I'm always happy to have that discussion. Thank you, Chief. Hey, okay. thanks, Don. Okay. We will head back over to operating and to public works. And I saw Ed join the meeting a while back, so he's here to help add to any um, any things that I can't give you enough on. <clears throat> Start with management and engineering. This is the administrative function. Sorry doing there. Um, so in the full-time salary, just to give you a flavor, what we do here is we allocate the salaries of the staff um, 
to various functions. So uh, you'll see percentages next to their um, descriptions. So uh, depending on each person's function, they may also have a, a portion of their salaries allocated to the sewer fund or the parking operations fund. So there's no changing in staff there. Um, we do bring in seasonal and temporary to assist with the dump permit season. <clears throat> um, so you see a slight increase in there, but reduction in overtime. The rest of the budget is for this section is pretty unremarkable, no significant changes. Um, if there are no questions on that area, um, going to go to um, Let's see. Ah, I went out back too far. Sorry. Um, we'll go to parking operations. Um, this is for the town owned lots. Okay, as opposed to the state owned lots. So this is Leroy West and the Center Street lots and uh, Grove Street. So uh, what you're seeing here is salary reduction. This is um, not a reduction in personnel. It's a function of um, having a new employee in the last year. Overtime is up um, and that's based on what this employee has been doing for us um, it's based on snow and maintenance work. Um, right now, we've been having this employee um, open the train station. Um, it used to be done by a vendor um, that managed the, um, what do you call it, the, um, you know, like a little coffee and news st station. Um, we no longer have a vendor. Um, so we've been having an employee go to open the, the, um, the station up early, which is costing us an overtime. We are looking into getting remote locks um, so that the doors could be open and shut um, remotely and save us in overtime. Um, professional services. These are credit card fees. I will say we are looking at um, changing our software for the permit processing. Uh, which may allow us to reduce this in the future. Um, we do hire outside services to help plow the lots. That's what that number is for. And then facility maintenance, this is for the, the station. Um, <clears throat> for the light posts, um, signs and materials. Okay. Yep. Is the... Um software for the payment is this all a part of a conversation of the rate systems that we should be using as far as you know payment systems for everything well um yes and no um it really started as um being unhappy with the um some of the things that we could do with the, the current provider um looking to go to a system that would allow us to get rid of the hang tags but still allow for um, permit holders to have more than one vehicle on a permit um, and to integrate our enforcement with our um, permits and daily paying. So that's where it started. Um, public building management, this is um, the expenses of the facilities. Uh, this is town hall and um, in the garage. So the salaries you see here are the custodians for the town hall. Uh, slight reduction in overtime. Security services, we've had to get a new, um, a new system. Um, 
which is causing an increase. Um, slight increase in repairs. It is an old building. Um, we are ticking up in electricity a little bit here. Um, and the sewer, sewer going down a little bit and heating fuel going down a little bit. Yeah, that, that's correct, both of them. One was a five-year average, the one for the heating fuel. We've been pretty steady in this building right now since we had the systems up, upgraded as far as the uh, building maintenance system. Um, just for the water use, that, that, that water use had uh, made a, a, um, a slight reduction. It wasn't much, and then you see that in the, uh, the sewer building. Um. So I'm going to go to the big budget here. This is where Ed predicts how many snowstorms we're going to have. Um, so, you know, if you take a look into the salary, you're going to see um, how we break down all the employees, uh, similar to the police department, just not as many, but you'll see all these positions um, broken down, all that detail for you. No headcount change there. <clears throat> um, we do again bring in some seasonal employees to help out. Overtime salary. Um, so this is where you know here's our prediction: seven storms at time and a half, eleven at double time, um, and then the other kind of overtime that we do. Um, slight increase in traffic marking and paving these Ed just materials costs. That's, that's correct, Kate. I think with the last um, issue with storms that we've had, um, there have been requests and, and um, viable requests to change or add basins. And so we evaluated that. So I put some additional money in for some drainage parts, catch basins, piping, so that we can uh, implement some of those changes in the springtime, or in, I'm sorry, in July, just before we do the paving. Okay, and you can see we do a lot of work on tree maintenance. Um, we do as much as we can every year within the budget. Um, Streetlight maintenance, you know, a few years ago, we bought the streetlights. Um, so we've been able to reduce our costs um, in terms of maintenance, looking at the amount of um, coverage of service we have to provide and the cost of the repairs. Um, gasoline prices um, have gone up. Um, so we're taking a bit of a hit there. <clears throat> and then heating fuel has stayed pretty stable. Um, tires, this is one of those, as you see in some other departments, where it can go up and down and it depends on the, um, the which tires we have to buy each year. Uh, this is a non-loader year. The loader tires are the expensive ones I've learned out over the years. And then salt and, well, not, I was going to say salt and sand, but this is um, the salt. Um, that we buy for the snow removal. Any questions there, Sarah? No question. I just wanted to say, Ed, I'm not sure where to put this, but thank you again for keeping our roads in good shape. This weekend's another fine example of your team always out there. Seems to be out there 24 seven. So thank you very much. Thank you, I appreciate that. Kate, I have a question on the tree maintenance. So Ed, the 5,000 you have in the capital for tree maintenance, that's something that's replacement and this is more um, pruning and removal, is that right? Yeah, that, that's correct. Okay. Okay, and then is this where you have paint for the, um, for the streets? Yep. 
traffic marking, the double yellow lines. And crosswalks, right? Yeah. And I, I, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but you budgeted enough for that, right? For, for painting crosswalks, even right. the new ones? <laughs> Just because I know we didn't get, um, we didn't get to some last year. And it's always a hot topic, yeah. And I know costs have gone up, so. Um, I, I will make that work for us to okay. do paint. As long as I can get paint, we will paint. Okay. Any other questions on the roads? Okay. <clears throat> um, the last item in Ed's public works operating budget is waste management. Um, so it represents two employees. Overtime is, uh, it, you know, it's up a little bit um, because of the schedule. Um, one of our employees is regularly scheduled to, um, his regular days are Saturdays. So um, we do have to have um, <clears throat> more coverage here for vacation days or sick days. Professional services. This is our credit card processing fees for the um, dump permits and scale fees. We are talking to um, our software provider for the permit system to begin um, passing those credit card fees onto the consumers. So we may be able to do away with that um, charge there in the budget. Um, solid waste disposal fees. This is exactly what it sounds like, but it's broken down. You can see all the different um, types of costs. Um, Ed, is there anything you want to highlight there or? I'm going to mention how we had more garbage these past two years during COVID. That's probably the, the biggest uh, item that I have absolutely no control over. Um, but it's the, the other hit that we did take, Kate, and it's shown in the budget is we, we hit a 4% CPI increase, which a lot of our rates are tied to in our contract with city carding. So that's more of a reflective in that number of 26 grand going up. Um, and we're still seeing a, a, a slight increase in over last year in the uh, MSW that we're getting at the transfer station site right now. Um, gonna take a look at it uh, when we get our reports back for January in a week and uh, see what the trends are. See if it's starting to slow down a little bit. Okay, and household hazardous waste is up significantly. <clears throat> um, was that strictly a number of participants or was it the fees going up? We, we had to get a new vendor. <clears throat> the, uh, <clears throat> the vendor that we had for quite a few years um, uh, got in trouble with the federal government, so we could no longer <laughs> use them. And in doing that, uh, the new vendor that came in pretty much doubled his prices. Um, that's the increase that you're looking at right now. Okay, and then we have some decreases in telecommunications. It's just getting better rates on cell phone plans and operating supplies down slightly. Um, but generally a pretty stable budget. Just want to mention, Kate, that telecommunications, we have a fiber optic line that we use, and I, I was just happy to talk to Selena about this today. Um, they gave us an option of paying it at the beginning of every fiscal year um, and saving $100 a month on it. That's the credit you're seeing right there for $1,200. So we took that option this year. Thought it was a good plan. Couldn't try to do it next year also. Okay. Okay, any questions on the... Um solid waste or other public works operating. Hey, can we go into revenues? Yep. Wait, before we do that, Kate, Ed, where um where is street sweeping? Where does that what what um the town is that under? It's under the roads. Under, it's right. under roadways. It's um generally in our overtime account. We hit the downtown areas or we hit the downtown area every Thursday, um, first thing in the morning from uh, four to seven, um, unless it's snowed or the inclement weather or, or like right now, we wouldn't do it right now until it starts to melt. But that's our original. And then 
the rest of the time periods, uh, we designate days during the week to go out and street sweep so that you wouldn't see it anywhere in a budget or a line item other than the overtime for the downtown areas um, when uh, when we like to keep them clean for the use down there springtime, summer, and the fall. And I'm just thinking for flooding is, um, is the 10 times is would would more street sweeping help with keeping the culverts cleaner? I I think we do a great job keeping the streets clear and the catch basins clear. And I think we we make a, a conscious effort to go to our what we call our hot spots or our low spots that have a tendency to flood to make sure that not only the basin tops cleared, but the basins themselves are clear and ready to be used. And Ed, during a flood, how much of the stuff that gets onto the street does not originate in the street, but comes out of people's um, private property and, you know, ends up flowing down the street and clogging the drains? I, I have to say a, 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 the majority of it does. If we, we've done our job and the streets are clear, a lot of the stuff that sits on top of those basins at the end of the storm have come from side properties or side streets or driveways. Um, I got to say that we we do a very good job of cleaning these basin tops, and I'm, I'm, I'll be the first one to say though, are we perfect? No, but we make an every attempt during these storms when they're coming to make sure that the areas that we know that flood on a regular basis are ready for the storm that's coming. Thank you. Okay. Hey, before we go to revenues, we have two questions on waste management expenditures. Okay. How about it? Is the single stream recycling contract expires in June 2024? Any update on the status of extending it? Should we expect it to main, main, to remain profitable? Um, my question. You know, you know what I don't have in front of me is my calendar, but I, I have a, a meeting set up. Um, we had this meeting set up a, or two weeks ago, um, and we met with um, the new gentleman that's running our area from City Carding. And uh, we started the conversation already with regards to renegotiating the contract, some items that we wanted to talk to them about with specifically, you know, getting better rates for them. We are targeting to continue to have recycling as uh, generating a positive revenue. Uh, that's that's um, phenomenal. That's that's our goal. I mean, that's our that's our starting point, and uh, we're waiting for, to hear back from him. He stressed to us that. They'd like to get started negotiating this before the time runs out, and I stress to him that I like his thinking. So we're gonna we're gonna continue to push that forward and see if we get something settled. You know, it's gonna take a little bit of time, but hopefully within the next year. This time we're talking about the fact that we've already uh, locked everything in. Thank you, Ed. Sure. Okay, and then the other question is: um, I heard that City Carding was purchased. Can you confirm that? And does the purchase of City Card have an effect on our existing or future contracts? Um, they were. There's a there's a company out of uh, this gentleman's out of Texas. There's their main offices out of New New Hampshire. They're still calling them City Win. I think it is. I just use City Carding so you folks know what I'm talking about. Um, it doesn't affect our current contract. The con contract still holds. Um, the negotiating is is still the same. Um, still have to determine how we're going to go forward with the scope of work that we've given this company that's purchased uh, the city carding old contract. Okay, I'm going to revenues now. Um, Sarah, did you have a particular revenue you were interested in? I think Ed answered it. I was just curious about the recycling contract. I know we had talked a couple years about the fact that it was going to be coming. So I'm, he's already answered it. Okay, all right, then we'll go to Capital for the Public Works Department. <clears throat> so this is one of our biggest um, capital items. Sidewalks. Yeah, so. Um, Starting off, replacing one of the the, um, the trucks at two hundred twenty five thousand um, dollars. This is part of the change from uh, you know what the board of finance had done a number of years ago, where 
um, they, they got rid of the vehicle replacement funds. Um, so now we see them um, on an indiv individual basis. Um, so this is one of the large trucks. Um, then the next ones up you'll see are sidewalk rehab and new sidewalks. So <clears throat> we're looking at $120,000 for new sidewalks, $750,000 for sidewalk rehab. Are there any questions on either the sidewalk um, projects? It, yes, uh, this is Mike. Uh, for $120,000, how many miles or feet of sidewalks are that? And how did you make the determination of where they will be placed? Ed, you're on mute. Ed? Yes. You okay? I was gonna say <laughs> this uh, is you. This is all you. <laughs> yeah. No, I got this. Um, so, so let's first of all make a determination of where. So I get a lot of um, input from residents on where we should and should not put new sidewalks, um, where they're needed, where where there's a high traffic area, and I, I evaluate those locations. Um, we have a a nice um, matrix of uh, evaluating. You know anything from need, use, construction, uh, permitting, right, right down to you know, is there uh, um, uh, high expenses that putting the sidewalk in would cost? So that's one way. And the second way is things that I observe out there in the field of people using our town, where I think uh, there's a piece of sidewalk that may be missing. Um, so the, this 120 is going to cover you know a, approximately. I'd say about 400 feet of concrete curb and sidewalk. Um, this is designated for one location over on Kingsall, uh, Old Kings Highway North from the Boston Post Road to I-95 Bridge. It is a portion of sidewalk that's going to allow um, uh, a contiguous sidewalk from the Post Road all the way to East Lane. Um, that section up on East Lane to the on-ramp for I-95 is going to be done by a private developer. So this was our um, portion that we're going to take responsibility and then we'll have a completed section all the way down. The other piece of it is on Heights Road from the Neroden Heights uh, parking lot up to um, Neroden Avenue on the south side of Heights Road. There's a section in there that actually needs, it's, it's just missing. It needs it, people don't cross over. Sometimes I see them walking um, in the gutter line along that guardrail, it's not safe. Uh, it's the same thing I did over at Post 53. Ended up putting a nice sidewalk from the Roten Avenue all the way down to the parking lot. Um, I see that used quite often now. So um, just another piece that I noticed out there. Is, um, is it possible at some point to uh, share that matrix? Is, there a, is that a working document? It's, uh, it's public information. You can always look at it. I can always give it out there. I have okay. provided for people that have asked to look at it. Uh, terrific. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see it. Sure. Okay. Anything else on sidewalks? Uh, question from the chat. Will most sidewalks be blacktop or cement? That answer is yes. <laughs> it depends. Um, I, I try to be con consistent with the policy that we had, and I think my predecessor put in place, which is actually a pretty good, because we've got a pretty good system, everything around our schools, post road, um, you know, state highways, um, major arteries, all called for a concrete sidewalk. I try to be consistent. If it's a concrete sidewalk that's in place, there's a missing portion. I'll put back the, the, the concrete or asphalt, depending on which one it is. Um, but I try to be consistent with the policy of, uh, of what Mr. Steger had put in place, so I thought was a very good one, um, and very consistent throughout town. He was uh, just trying to keep up with that model. Okay, <clears throat> moving on. The next um, item is a very large one: paving, one point two million dollars. This is for resurfacing um, of roads. Ed, how many miles? Does it get us? 
Yes. And just for reference, how many miles do we have in town? Uh, 81. Okay. Do we have any questions on the paving? Uh, one from the chat. With petroleum reaching highs, has that affected the mileage we will be paving next year? Um, it, it, it could. It, it's impacted our fuel purchasing costs right now. I always see that the asphalt prices, the liquid asphalt prices lags behind the gasoline and diesel price increases. Um, but uh, I've already factored in an increase into my spreadsheet for paving for next year. Um, it could, it, it should be okay, but it could be a little bit low, but I'll, if it's, if I miss shot that I'll, I'll end up not, maybe not doing a road or two, but uh, as of right now, I, I think I'm in a good place with the estimate. Okay, um, next we have the town hall gymnasium upgrades. Um, just gonna shoot back to the um, explanation. We've been working on um, upgrading the windows and this has been an ongoing project. We have rotted sills, we have flashing that needs to replace. Um, planning to tint the windows to help with the overheating of the um, of the space in there. So it should be a cost um, reduction as well. Um, and it's important to um, continue this project and finish it up. What are the okay. uses of the gym and who uses it? A lot of people. Parks and Rec, I would say, is probably our biggest user. They run a lot of programs in there. Um, we ran all the COVID clinics in there, um, the elections, um, uh, use it as a polling place. The um, Mather Center, the senior programs rather, have used it. Um, they have activities, they have pickleball um, programs in there. Um, and the Youth Commission uses it for, um, for various events, for, um, for dances. Um, and then we do rent it um, to other agencies. Got it, thank you. Do we see an end date on the window project? Yes, <laughs> we do. Um, I believe next year would be the, I'm sorry, 24 would be um, the end date. It's been going on for a while. Yeah, there's a lot of windows. Yeah. Yeah, 2024 would be the end. What I did with that, Sarah, was I, I divided up the, the gym because I can only work in one section at a time and still keep the gym accessible for others to use. So I've been trying to do the two ends first and then I have the sidewalls by the small gym to do. Um, and that's kind of where, how I broke it up. Okay, the next item here, um, $75,000 for repairs to 701 Boston Post Road. If you're not familiar with uh, what that is, it's the small historic um, building that's in front of the Royal. It's where the paramedics are housed. And uh, again, we need to replace windows. We need to replace um, sills. Um, this is something that I did suggest could be a good project for the ARPA funds. Any questions on that one? Okay. Um, you'll see I did not put forward resurfacing the post 53 lot. Um, it was medium priority and um, something I felt could be delayed. Once again, I've pushed off remodeling room 206. Um, I would like to get that done at some point because I feel that room is um, old. It's not, the dais is not handicapped accessible, but um, not a high priority item. Um, Next is resurfacing the gym floor. Uh, it needs to happen periodically. Um, then we have at the transfer station, replacing the, um, the driveway and curb. If I got that right, driveway curb. Um, I'm just gonna pull up the description. Um, this has come up in the past and we've delayed it. Um, and I think just for um, safety reasons, um, it's time to, um, to replace it. 
Um, it's been damaged over the years. Um, so I think it's, it's been put off for a number of years. So I decided, you know, with this one, I think it, it, it's time to get done. Um, and it's a big ticket number, but I think if you go over there and you take a look, you'll, you'll see that it's really, um, you know, it's two parts. One is replacing all the curbing, which is asphalt. So it's going to be replaced with cement. And you can see the asphalt is, you know, they're just chunks um, that are um, misplaced and it definitely needs paving. Okay, any questions on that one? All right. And then the last two items, um, tree replacement, which is exactly what it sounds like and something that we do on an ongoing basis. And then small capital, which you, you've seen in a number of the departments, it's just to cover some small capital items, um, just a $5,000 ongoing allotment. So any questions on public works capital or operating before we go to sewer. Take, take um, it. I'm sorry, go ahead. Jessica. Yeah. One question on an out year project, Heights Road drainage upgrades are scheduled for 2024 rather than this year or rather than 2023. Given the severe flooding in this area, should this be a 2023 project? The improvements had have more to do with um, getting the flows down to the pipe itself. It's the um, structures that are there right now need to be replaced, but not in their entirety. And, and my thought is I can't do just one little piece. I need to do the parking lot also to upgrade the structures that they were all tying into. That was a big piece of the 150 is fixing and um, replacing a lot of the catch basins with larger structures. And it doesn't do me any good. I'm still tying into the parking lot drainage into the back of a lot of them. So I need to do it alongside and, and in conjunction with the parking lot um, drainage um, project. And we're still waiting on the state for permission for that, correct? That's correct. Okay. Sounds like we have a meeting with them about that. I say sounds like they're gonna mix it together with the pipe culvert under I-95 project on Wednesday. Um, I'm going to try to get to that, you know, be part of that meeting. I, the mediation is um, overlapping that same um, meeting with the DOT. So we'll, we'll see. But Darren will be there. I just I wanted to be involved also. Okay. All right. Last call on public works. So, Kate, right. is this where I asked for the drone? <laughs> No? Okay. No, I'll, no. I'll just have Don. Don will have you to. You just talk to you know, Don. Let me, let me yeah. use this. Okay. Going to move to the sewer operating. So first thing, just a reminder on the sewer operating that this is a self-supporting fund. It does not um, draw on the property taxes. So in sewer administration, if you recall back in public works, we talked about um, some of the salaries being allocated. So this is where you'll see some of them. Um, there is one account clerk who is uh, fully charged to this, this budget. Um, over time, we are increasing that, um, finding more of a need for the staff to, to work overtime on sewer issues. That is the administrative staff. Um, Reduction in clerical services, that's for, um, I believe, minutes for meetings. That was not my reduction, that was proposed. Um, printing, $700 increase there, you know, looks significant. This is about um, price increases in the, um, the forms for sewer bills. And, you know, we do send some out for billing collection. Um, there's 
cost to that, softer costs, um, minor increase there. They do pay this uh, for the tax software that's used for collect for the billing. Um, but overall, not a large increase in that budget. Uh, should not be any. Okay, so there are some revenues associated with that. Um, primarily interest on past due accounts. And then we'll go to um, overhead miscellaneous. Um, this is expenses that the sewer fund has to pay for insurance, um, employee benefits. Um, so you're seeing the same kind of things um, that have hit in, um, in the general fund. Uh, liability insurances, medical insurance, um, life insurance and disability. Um, you know, you might see different rates of change here and that all has to do with the personnel and um, in different coverage levels. Um, we do have um, some money set aside. Um, there are employees in this, but in this department who are um, in unions that have open contracts. Um, collection. So this is our sewer crew. No change in headcount. Very stable budget. Not a lot of change here at all. Um, minor increases. This is where the bulk of the revenues come in. This is the sewer user fees. And then we'll go back out to the most fun line item. This is the biggest one. These are the fees we pay Stanford to treat our sewage. And Ed, I don't know if there's anything interesting to tell us about it this year. No, I, I think that just about covers it right there. <laughs> okay. Does anybody have questions on the sewer operating? Ed, did, were our sewer user fees increased this year? Yeah, it's 2.9%, um, I believe it was. Yeah, so the, you know, the interesting thing We'll tell, you know, when the budget is developed and we tell them um, what the revenues should be, it is up to the sewer commission to establish the rates. So, you know, they're going to get the number that, you know, this big number, the 4.1 million, that's, but it's up to them to set the rate. So let's go find the sewer capital. Okay. So not a lot of exciting stuff. Ongoing maintenance of the um, of the system, collection system rehab, root control, replacing of the pumps. These are things that um, we've been doing every year and equipment replacement reserve. Um, that I'll oh, see what that is. To replace one of the, the vehicles, which is 12 years old. 
So um, I'm going to bring up the six year plan, show them all at once. And if anybody has any questions on any of the sewer capital. Any questions on sewer capital? Okay. All right. We're going to go to parking. Hey, I do. I have one question on on sewer. And yep. you do you do um, the camera work each year, and you do about eight miles. Um, is and we have eighty some miles, right? Is, yeah, yeah. Uh, those 80, 81 miles of uh, sanitary sewer. Right. So you're estimating it'll take 10 years to do all of the camera work? Mm, that's correct. And then we start again. Well, at that, at that point, you hope you've identified <clears throat> areas that you don't have to go back and do as heavily. Um, other areas you may want to do more frequent. I think that's what the, the first pass gives you. And then the the second go around that uh, CMOM program allows you to make some judgment calls on where you need to go back and spend more time looking others where you can wait two or three cycles before you go back again. Um, I'm going to start in parking lot administration here. Um, so again, these are the state-owned lots. So that's Neroten Heights in the Darien, the two stations or two lots on either side of the train station in that little uh, Leroy East, um, the one that's tucked in between the Coons lot and the train tracks. Um, this, the bulk of this is the salary of our parking administrator, who's also the town hall receptionist. Um, some slight overtime for her during peak permit collection or permit renewal time. Um, professional services is um, software fees, mailing, nothing terribly remarkable here. Um, I'm doing this wrong. Okay, this is the one that I want to make sure that everybody sees. <clears throat> um, this is the parking crew and parking operations. So uh, the thing is what you're seeing here last year, we had budgeted for basically one and a half. We, we had had for um, two parking rangers to manage the enforcement and the maintenance of the, the properties. Um, last year, based on the um, utilization of the lots, I had proposed that we um, we had a vacancy, and I proposed that we not fill the vacancy until January. Um, the utilization continues to be off dramatically. The revenues cannot support two full time employees, so that's what you're seeing here is the elimination and of um, one of the parking rangers um, because there's a vacancy right now in the public works department, I expect it to be done through attrition, um, but the parking fund cannot support two full-time employees at this time. Um, there is overtime obviously with, related to maintenance of the lots. And like I said, opening up the, um, the station at this time, um, professional services, that's credit card fees. Um, again, if we can change our software, that may go away. We do have some money in there for platform training um, and snow removal. Uh, I reduced it um, based on our um, our historic actuals. So that's the big change there. Um, wanted to call your attention to that. Um, otherwise, there's not a lot of changes in the budget. Um, although heating fuel is up and that's, you know, over the current year and that's based on going in for more utilization of the stations. Um, this is the other thing to highlight again, because the revenues are down, uh, the amount that we can afford to transfer to the capital fund has to go down. 
um, the other area impacted by um, the change in staffing would be the um, employee benefits. So you'll see reductions here as well. And on snow removal, we hire an outside um, contractor? Yes. Okay. We don't have the capacity through DPW? Um, no, I, I don't think we do. Um, we do have we do do some of the work like the sidewalks um and the platforms okay. okay some of the smaller storms we'll do ourselves <clears throat> there you'll see a year in there where we probably didn't even use it, the vendor one time and we had 11 12 storms so if they're manageable and the guys haven't been working 12 i mean i'm sorry haven't been working 18 24 30 hours we'll put the guys in the parking lots and we'll clean the parking lots ourselves um, it just really depends on the size of the storm that we're getting. Okay, and this is the revenue side. And what I want to um, point out to you here, the permits are not the issue. People have renewed their permits. Um, it's the daily parking is off and the parking tickets are off. So our, um, and you know, the, the daily parking is the bigger part of our, our revenue. So. Um, hopefully, at some point, it will come back, um, but right now, it's just not there. How does paving of those uh, parking lots get handled? <laughs> um, out of this, out of um, where we're going next, parking capital, and um, you ask that, and the sad reality is that's... Um, what we're not doing. Um, Ed had hoped to be able to transfer enough in there that we could um, resurface the Neroten Heights South lot, the um, side by the highway, and we just can't. We don't have the revenue right now to support it. And all of the capital projects for the, rail, the station, all that comes from revenues generated as opposed to being included in just a normal town capital project and bonded? Yes. Um, you know, remember these, these are the state owned lots. Um, right. So um, the lease that we had that expired 10 years ago, um, but it's, so it's still the one that's in operation, um, that calls for us to basically um, put all the results of operations into back into the stations, whether through operations or through capital improvements. Um, could the town ever choose to pay for work in these stations out of um, general fund revenues? Yeah, you know, we could. Um, that would be a departure from past practice. Okay. That lot's in pretty bad shape. Yeah, I think that's why Ed wanted to resurface it. Um, you know, it's just, um, well, the funding's not there. Um, we could take, a, uh, you know, we could take a look at um, other projects that are planned there and the money's already in there. And, you know, do we re reallocate it? But. Okay. Okay. So any other questions on parking? Okay. That's it. Sarah. Kate, yeah. where is Edgerton? Say that again? Where are we putting Edgerton? What do you mean by putting Edgerton? So we, we put some money into the lot to clean it up. Um, if it falls under the Board of Selectmen, which budget would oh, the maintenance um, or any work, where does yeah, that fall? Sure. I thought maybe it would be public works, but I'm not entirely sure. So yeah, it was public works. Um, okay. I didn't catch it then. It was well, but that was last year, right? Um, so we spent seventy. We budgeted. Let's see, where are we? Seventy-five. Yep, and then 
I didn't, you know, we had talked about maybe at some point doing something with it. I didn't know if there was a plan or. Well, the 75 was to remove Clean the asphalt that... and the concrete and take down the dead trees and. Um... Maybe it wasn't pub put in public works. No, it was put in public works. No, it Gen was. Uh... Last year. Uh, might be general government. Okay. Jen, do you recall? The Edgerton Capital should be in public works for 2022. Okay. I think it was 75,000. Okay, so there's nothing in for 2023. There's nothing to do anymore. Okay, there it is. Got it. Yeah. Okay, so that's last year's. There's nothing to do right now. There's Correct. nothing on the table for next year. Okay. Correct. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you. Okay. Um, that was all we had planned for the evening, and that pretty much wraps up the budget. Um, I'm coming back here at seven o'clock tomorrow, and um, you really need to start talking about what you want to do. Um, if anything, you know, are there things you want to add back, or there things you want to cut, um, and really start getting that discussion going tomorrow night. Hey, you, you've been keeping a running tally, right, of things that we've discussed? Well, Jen has. Jen, do you think you can send it out tomorrow morning so that people can take a look at it? Yeah, I can send that out. I mean, honestly, there's not much yet. There have been a couple of, gee, let's look at this or that, but um, it's not a very lengthy list at the moment. Okay. And we do have um, we do have information on the grand list. Um, there was some good growth, um, about one point eight seven percent growth in the net grand list. Um, of course, we lost some of our non-tax revenue, and we were informed this morning um, that one of the state grants that we have budgeted for in the past is um, likely off the table this year. Um, Which grant is that? And it's the municipal revenue sharing grant. It was about 143,000. Um, yeah, we haven't received it for quite a while. Um, and then it was scheduled to be about 143,000 in 2023, but the guidance from CCM is don't plan on it. So we need to take that out of our um, projection. Um, I think that was under the assessors. Um, how, how much is that? 142.2. And I believe it's under Board of Select and Cape. Well, I believe you're right. So that's a hit. Um, we've also, you know, have rev revenue decreases in some other areas. Um, that are offsetting some of the gains we got from the um, from the increase in the grand list. So um, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Okay. okay. Anything else for tonight? Nope. Is there? I'm sorry. Is there what? Which budgets, if any, are on the list for tomorrow? Or is this? A, there are not. Oh, it's a general discussion tomorrow. General discussion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I did um, say to Pam Deary that um, she, I know she sent you some additional information on um, the Weed Beach proposed project. Um, so she will be joining us tomorrow night if you have any questions for her as part of your deliberations. Kate, is there any way to get some updated numbers before then or no? Updated numbers on? The proposal. The proposal. Um, for the Weed Beach, well, okay. Yeah. Um, because they're from two years if, ago. If there are That's any that concern. are available, you'll you'll get them tomorrow night. Okay. Okay. I'm not. I'm just not counting on them being available. No, I just was curious. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anybody else has any questions? I think we'll call it a night. Thank you, friends. All right. Thank you. Kate. Thank, Thank you, you everybody. Thank you, everyone. All right. Good night. Good night. <laughs>